What's up everybody? This is Mike of Much Development coming to you with another Coding Tech original. Today we're going to be discussing 10 helpful VS Code extensions for JavaScript. All right, so without further ado, let's get started. All right, so you see I've got my main.js over here and you can see it's all over the place with the formatting, right? So how can I fix this? There is there anything that I can do? Well, absolutely yes. I'm going to install our first extension and you're probably very familiar with it. I talked about it on the last video. It's prettier. All right, prettier for the win. I'm going to enable this. Okay, and then I'm going to go into settings and command uh, comma. I'm going to make sure that format on save is enabled. And it is. I'm going to come back here and I'm going to just click save and voila. Right now, it's obviously opinionated. You see here, it uh, it brought the brackets up. So it's opinionated about where the bracket should be. It should be on the same line as the function or on the, the next line. Uh, it also is opinionated about semicolons out of the box. Uh, it also is uh, uh, opinionated about line length, right? So it's going to, when I save that, it brings this down here. It's also opinionated about, uh, and it should be, about whether, bra like, where if nesting of if statements, right? So you see when I save, it does that, right? Um, again, all of this is customizable, so you can go into the prettier settings and change it. Uh, it's, it's also opinionated about single and double quotes, right? So if I were to change this to single quotes here, when I save it, it's going to make it double quotes, right? So again, you go in and you set those settings up on your own, um, but prettier if you're trying to format your code, uh, format it on save uh, to get rid of all of the, you know, the guesswork as to did I put this on the right line and put it, you know, prettier for the win. Go, go for it, right? All right. So bracket pair colorizer, number two, bracket pair colorizer. All right. So before I enable it, and this is bracket pair colorizer two, all right, you see here, all of my brackets and all of my parens are white, right? Now there's nothing wrong with that, right? If they want to be white, they can be white. Let them just stay that way. But for my eyes, I'd like to see something a little bit different that helps me to uh, figure out where, like what's closing what. OK, and that's where bracket color bracket pair colorizer. So the prayer, the ending and the beginning bracket are going to be the same color. All right. So let's install that. Enable it. You go over here. You can install it. You would have that green button there. I just have it in an enable button because it's already installed on my machine. So I'm going to enable it and then I'm going to reload. And the defaults are going to be gold, orchid and light sky blue right all right you can tell i've done a couple of takes of this right <laughs> so you can go in and you can change that information though right so gold uh you see the uh the orchid and then light sky blue right so all of these are now changed where the light sky blue is one of them down there there it is that that closing uh parens is light sky blue all right so you can change all of that in your settings right here right bracket pair colorizer two colors right for two three you can just change them you can add them right so you can do that to your heart's content whatever looks good to your eye right you change it up all right so number three is indent rainbow now let me show you what life is like before indent rainbow what it's going to change all right you see this little uh section right here where it's uh that little lines going down there right and then that color in between is all black right you can see right what's closing what and then again you have the disclosure triangle that where well, you can you know open it and close it right um but what indent rainbow does and you'll see immediately is that it turns this into sort of a little pyramid right a rainbow of uh things that you can see like i could say okay now i can look straight down and see that that same color goes with that color that goes with that with that with that right and it's doing that for all of them okay so when you have nested uh, and again this is a simple javascript file but when you have a uh, more complex javascript like let's say you're working in angular or reactor view and you've got you know many things nested it gets very it's very helpful to see this visually to know where the line goes down all right so number four is to do highlight all right let me oh, let's do that there you go to do highlight okay so you see i've got one to do and one fix me in here now these are comments and i can just like well i don't really care i'm gonna pass this up because my eye's not drawn to that that's just a comment who cares all right well not with to do highlight you have to work to <laughs> with the default colors let's show you what i'm talking about you have to work to ignore these two all right you see that right that's pink and that's bright that's bright orange all right so to do highlight again as in everything uh to do right to do highlight you can uh where is it oh it just ran away from me okay it, was, it had its own thing so you can look at certain things you can um in the uh in the settings you can change the colors 
Uh, let's see, where is that? Yeah, default style. Uh, well, if you can go into the yeah default, exclude no modules. Uh, I think you can change the colors, if I'm not mistaken. I'm pretty sure. But you can go into the settings and, and check on that yourself, right? So include case sensitive enabled keywords. Yeah, uh, I'm pretty sure there's a way to change the colors in there. But uh, just go check out the documentation. But to do highlight uh, is, is amazing. It helps you to see visually. Uh, I've got work to do, right? So need to make this line shorter. Well, I did that by installing prettier so I can get rid of that one. Yeah, to did to did all right so all right so uh and then you get you got this fix me here right react is not a framework how dare you right react is a library how dare i okay uh so you can change that uh, i have to fix that right so whenever i'm up here i need to have a conditional that says if, if the framework is equal to react then just use library instead of framework okay all right so number five number five version lens now to enable version lens i've got to do a couple of things i've got to create an M npm project all right so i'm going to do no package manager npm uh init initialize minus y accept all the defaults okay and then i'm going to need to install all right a couple of packages so i'm going to do axios common you know well known well known low dash another well known i probably could have installed moment let me just install moment right install because that'll help later on for something else that i'm going to show you all <laughs> all right so uh so version lens all right so let's go to, let's look it up version lens that is number five all right version lens okay so we're going to open up our package.json file all right so we've got our three there right so let's let's enable version lens and see what it gives us all right so version lens i do not do that. up there it is right up there at the top you see that show dependency versions all right so i'm going to click it OK, so now look, this is telling me that I'm at the latest right there. So I've got the latest of all of these three. So let's say if you were an old. Let's let's look at this. Let's see if I had that and I saved it. It satisfies. Right. So you see what changed. It satisfies point two zero. But the latest is this. So I can also click it and, and it'll update it right inside of my package.json and says. So now if I if I install it, it's going to install the latest version. OK, so that's just a visual real quick visual to let you see okay well in my package.json am i are any of my packages out of date and can i install them right uh I'll update them okay so it's a visual cue for that all right and i really like it all right i really like that it's something i'm always using okay because i go back to my old code a lot and i'm like okay this is breaking why well it's probably because you you install something newer that doesn't work with something older all right so let's go to number six all right number six is import cost import cost okay uh import cost before i install it i'm going to do something really quickly so i'm going to install i'm going to um bring in those three libraries that i installed all right so moment equals require whoops not request moment all right and i'm going to say give me those three i'm going to say low dash all right low dash and then i also want what was the other one axios and axios dot default okay so and then i save it you see what happened it's like wait a minute you, it, it fixed everything for me okay so right now i'm looking at this and it's like well they're really you know great thanks you, i know what i know how to use these things i can put them in there and i know it. i'm not using them right now but what does import cost show me let's enable it and let's see what happens all right you see what it's doing it's calculating the amount of space that I'm going to use when I import this, right? It's it's calculating. It's like, okay, well, you're using 71. Ooh, and it's like, look at moment. Like, uh, that's red, right? Do I want to, do I really want to use moment, right? Uh, do I want to use low dash? Is there any way that I could, you know, if I need specific things, let's see if I just need it pick from low dash, what, would that change anything? Uh, if I just, you know, if Axios, Axios is, is, is okay, right? Um, if I just want, so I was like, okay, if I want omit, like, what could I do to just pull off certain things? How could I, how could I make this a little bit less expensive? So you get to make those decisions, right? When you're actually in, um, you know, in the weeds and discussing, um, what libraries you want to use, you can look at import cost and import costs will help you to make wise decisions as to which libraries to use. Right. Cause that moment, woo, moment, look at you moment is. Is a, is a beast all right so you got the red right and i think there's probably a way to go into your settings and uh let's look at uh, let's see import cost all right so there's no settings is that in the settings man we'll see i mean well, let's just look in here and see because you may be able to say you know what 
Uh, so yeah, default import, yeah, it, and it does all of them, right? So it uses um, any of these. It lets you, right? So it supports JavaScript and TypeScript. I'm not sure about the settings. Uh, small package size. Okay, that's what I was looking for, right? So a medium package size would be 50k. So you can set these things. Okay, I figured you could. All right, and then you want to, you can set the colors to let you know, like, okay, this is what I'm looking for, and you can set your ignores. Okay, cool. So I hadn't done it. I was just using the defaults, but you know, I mean. Yeah, this is pretty this is pretty good just out of the box. All right. So the next thing that we're going to use is something we've already used before, but I'm going to cheat a little bit because we use it in the HTML CSS is get lens. All right. Because it's not the it's not only an HTML CSS that we need this. All right. So let me initialize uh, an empty Git project. Uh, git. Uh, I'm going to do a git add. Well, let's make sure I do git oh, touch dot git ignore ignore. All right, and then I'm going to open up the git ignore, uh, git ignore, and then I'm going to add node modules to it, right? Node modules, because we do not want that going up, right? So you see, it goes from from a thousand plus to ten. All right, so now I'll do a git add dot, do a git commit minus m initial commit. All right, and okay. So what we should get with Git Lens, well, we haven't installed it yet, but that I just did. I had to do that to do that basic like first commit thing. All right. So let me enable Git Lens. All right. And it's going to read the application and you see what happens now. It looks at look at that. Look at that guy there. Ha <laughs> ha. Look at him. <laughs> look at that fella. All right. So it shows you who just who's who's the person that um, that made this last commit. All right. You can click their profile. You can go and take a look at it. Um, yeah, you can click it and just go and say, oh, look at that guy. Well, I'm not doing that. Or you could email them. OK, and just tell them how much you don't like them. All right. But you can also click on the commit. Uh, and I think that's going to go to. Yeah. All right. So we did that last time. Right? It shows you what was committed. All right. So you get to see all of that information with Git Lens. I love Git Lens. All right. If, like if you're using Git get lens okay so let's move to number eight and nine they're like a double dip okay a double dip all right so debugger for chrome all right so we're gonna do that and we're gonna install it all right so if you're used to debugging pack uh your applications right in chrome or firefox because i'm gonna do that one too i'm gonna enable both of them all right so i have i'm gonna go live uh with this html all right and I'm gonna let's go over here. Let's see. I think I have it already uh, running. There it is. Okay, great. All right, let me clear. Let me clear the console there. All right, so it's already running. All right, so in my uh, I want, let's just say right here I want to uh, when I get to this line I want to set that as a breakpoint. Okay, so I'm gonna come over here and I'm gonna click Run. So I'm gonna click Launch in Chrome. All right. So I've installed the debugger now. Uh, so I'm launching it in Chrome. I'm going to click play. And then when I come to, yes, I should. All right. Wait, let's see. Require is not defined. Oh, duh. That's because I'm not in, I'm not in uh, Node.js. Right. <laughs> All right. So you have to go back to browser stuff. All right. So, okay. So you see, we've got our, it's paused in debugger, right? It's telling you that same thing. So you can see over here. And over here, it's doing the same thing, right? You've got a lot of so all, but but what happens is you can stay inside of Chrome. Oh, you can stay inside of Visual Studio Code now because you've got Chrome Developer Tools uh, set. So I can just walk. I can step into this. I can look at it. I can say, okay, what's my call stack over here, right? You've got a lot of stuff that you. Oh, look at my numbers, and I'm in my call stack. My call stack has just went up with the square, right? I've got all of my local variables. I got my global execution context over here. Uh, what I, what's on the global? My my functions are on the global global execution context. I got my subtract, all right, inside of the script. You got so I've got all of that information that I would have in Chrome. Now I've got it right here in Visual Studio Code. I don't have to go anywhere. Right. I can just stay right here. All right. So let's do that again. Let's do that in Firefox because that's number was that was number eight. Yeah, let's hold on one second. Let me just go back. All right. Yeah, that was number eight. Number nine is Firefox. Right. So I'm just going to do Firefox and do the same thing and hit play and it should open up in Firefox. And let's see Firefox. There it is. All right. So it's in it's opened up in Firefox. Did I stop? Let me reload it, refresh. There it is. All right. So now it's open in Firefox and we're doing the same stuff launched in Firefox and we can we can walk through it. Uh, let's look at the debugger over here in Firefox. You should see. Yeah, let's see. Breakpoints and watches. 
All right, let's do that. And we're going walk through, walk through, walk through, walk through. Okay, there it is. All right, let's see. Where's the where's the call stack over here? Is that the right one? Am I looking at the right one? I believe so. All right, let's see. Sources outline. Well, maybe it just maybe it uh, takes it over in, when I launch it over here, right? All right, but you see, it's actually running the code. So uh, that's yeah, that's that's uh, debugger for Chrome and Firefox. And number ten is probably one of my favorite recent uh, plugins. All right, it's it's it's, it's so amazing. Right, it's, it's it's helped me to get rid of other applications which shall remain nameless. Right, because I'm not here to disparage anyone. But uh, this one is called REST client okay rest client all right so i'm going to enable this and i'm going to open up uh the file that i created over here called routes.rest all right now look at this all right come on y'all like this is amazing you click you, i just have this is a exchange little exchange uh currency exchange thing that i did uh, i just installed the uh yeah installed it to a Heroku instance i click send request all right let's see come on work for me now do i need to reload let's stop let me reload the environment make sure that uh, this works all right because i have to this one is so nice i have to yeah all right so five minutes ago i'm the one that did that so let's see send request all right there it is okay so i did the tippy uh json placeholder.tippycode.com and post and you see what what came over here i just click send request and look at that man I've got the post, right? All right. So let's do that again, right? So I can put multiple requests in the same, um, in the same file. So if I just want to post 50, right? Boom. Post 50. I'm clicking, you know, if I want to add a post, right? I added a post, right? I just put post in front instead of, you know, just as assumes get. It assumes get, but then you can use the same thing with post, right? These, I just type, this is just, this is just a text file. Right in Visual Studio Code, but using that this amazing plugin REST client, uh, right? So I just updated this one. Like, hey, the Darth Vader surprise, Luke. Guess who's tall, dark, handsome, and your father? All right. So that's Darth Vader surprise. All right. So yeah, man. Like this is this one is amazing. Like, and I'll do yeah. Okay. So hit send request. Right, and you get the all of the um the the you know the currency exchange exchange rates at this ex exact moment, but REST client is a game changer, right? You get to click, you know, right here in your file, you get to uh, just type in your, you know, your request URL. And it even, it even supports uh, GraphQL, right? Uh, let, yeah, let's see. Um, I know I, I haven't done any, I haven't done anything with it yet, but uh, it, it actually supports, I think if you look at the, um, so making a GraphQL, obviously because of GraphQL, um, request it's just a post request right so yeah you can do it you just send in the, the you know the, the query of the mutation you can do whatever you need to do right but yeah it does support it uh, so let's see where is it yeah request headers it's, I mean the documentation is extensive this is probably one of the best oh man this is one of like give a shout out to Huacho who who chow Mao right who chow Mao like that guy needs like some hand claps, some some uh, love from the open source community because this is a game changing. I, I can't stop singing his praises, right? I'm gonna probably shut up so I can just like shorten this video, but I'm gonna end it. That's number ten, right? Okay, so uh, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to uh, to the channel if you haven't already. Uh, you'll find the link to the um, to the code um, on GitHub in the description. Uh, and again, tell us what you'd like to see next, um, you know, comment, let us know uh, what it is uh, we can do better to help uh, serve you. Uh, thanks again for tuning in to the Coding Tech uh, YouTube channel. I have been your host, Mike at Munch Development, and I'll see you on the next one. All right. Happy coding.